Hello, I'm Michael Brook, and welcome to the latest instalment of No Ticket Required, the Waterman's regular online film group that meets to discuss an outstanding example of international cinema. Now, as a parent, I've had to watch a lot of children's films, and every time I watch one by a director who seems an unlikely fit, there's usually something interesting about the end result. For instance, between the sexually explicit Itu Mama Tambien and the dystopian Children of Men, Alfonso Cuaron made Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, still ranked by many as the best of the Harry Potter cycle. And between Shutter Island and The Wolf of Wall Street, Martin Scorsese made the lovely 3D children's film Hugo. So while eyebrows were certainly raised at the news that Matteo Garoni, maker of hard-hitting crime dramas Gomorra and Dogman, was tackling one of the most beloved of all Italian children's stories, I approached it with a completely open mind. And quite rightly, because it turned out to be pretty terrific. Although Pinocchio has had many famous adaptations in the past, the most famous of all being Walt Disney's 1940 animated feature, none has ever been quite so faithful not just to the letter of Carlo Collodi's original 1883 novel, but also the culture from which it emerged. You might think that Pinocchio wouldn't have much in common with Gamora and Dogman, but in fact all three films revolve around people living in poverty and coming up with get-rich-quick schemes of dubious morality in order to lift themselves out of the mire. There's not a trace of Disney sentimentality here. This is a harsh, cruel world where towing the line is just as likely to earn you a beating as breaking the rules, so why not break the rules? Here's the trailer. I've been thinking to make with my hands by myself a wooden puppet. Pinocchio, try to say something. Babbo. My son, my son is born. From one day to the next. What do you mean from one day, from one minute to the next? Watch me, eh? And one, and two. If you do like me, in two or three days, you'll be walking by your... Pinocchio! He's a puppet like us. Who are you? Pinocchio. Ask me. I know a certain place called the Field of Miracles. <laughs> Put him in prison! Oh, come in prison! <laughs> What's going on with riddles? Gentlemen, the donkey Pinocchio. How did you grow up? It's a secret, you know. I don't want to be a puppet. I want to become a boy like all the others. Surprisingly for a very recent film, but entirely in line with Garoni wanting to make it as realistic as possible, the emphasis is on practical effects rather than CGI, with Mark Coulier's makeup for Pinocchio being directly inspired by the book's original illustrations. In the title role, Federico Ialapi has the challenge of appearing both authentically wooden and convincingly natural, and he pulls it off triumphantly. The most internationally famous actor in the film is Roberto Benigni as Geppetto. It's actually his second Pinocchio film, and a far more successful effort than his first back in 2002, in which he played Pinocchio himself despite already pushing 50. If the BBFC database is any guide, it never even opened in Britain, and by all accounts we're not missing much. However, the now nearly 70-year-old Benigni is perfectly cast in Garone's film as Pinocchio's creator. In parallel with the famous story of the wooden boy who wants to be real, we have an equally moving story of an impoverished man who merely wants the best for his son, no matter what he's made of. Now, a quick word about the soundtrack. The film was, of course, originally in Italian, but I suspect you're more likely to be watching the English dubbed version, and I can well imagine how a sensitive cinephile might react to that prospect. 
Fear not, Garone personally funded the English dub himself even before the rights had been sold to an English-speaking country because he was so determined that the film wouldn't end up with one of those ghastly transatlantic dubs that we all know and loathe. And despite the impression given by the trailer, we're not in House of Gucci territory either. All the voices are performed by authentic Italians, both to retain the right national flavour and to take advantage of their far greater experience at dubbing films to a technically high standard. So while it's not the original soundtrack, it nonetheless comes with the filmmaker's full approval. So, um, there's clearly plenty to talk about, and we'll be talking about it online on Monday, January the 10th at 8pm. And here are the instructions for joining.